the Catholic Bishop of Sakoto Diocese, Bishop Matthew Kuka, is in the news again. This time, he said the Buhari regime was taking care and rehabilitating repentant Boko Haram insurgents, but lacked empathy for their victims who were left to mourn their dead ones and paid ransoms to free their relatives. Also, in his Easter message, the overseer of the Citadel Global Community Church, Tunde Bakari, said Nigeria was in a state of emergency, adding that her health was in danger. And in response to Kuka's comments, the presidency had stated that his criticisms were ungodly. Well, joining me to uh, be part of this conversation, um, we have Mr. Bola Oba. He is a public affairs analyst. And of course, we have Andrew Ambrose Igboke, who is also a public affairs analyst. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us on this conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. All right. Well, let me start with what Pastor Bakare said. He said that Buhari has continued with Jonathan's opaque subsidy regime um, and he promised us change but that change he has not given us so i'm going to start with you ambrose um opaque and of course the issue of the subsidy regime now you and i remember everybody who's watching saw mr president at the time he wasn't the president we saw um, so many of them march through the streets of lagos on this same issue of subsidy and here we are again today on the same issue. Uh, Mr. Bakare obviously has a point, does he? I remember a group called SNG, Save Nigeria Group, mm -hmm. being run by today, Pastor DJ Bakare himself. That group joined all the so called uh, activists to stage a demonstration in January 2012 called subsidy protest. They occupied Ojota and occupied other strategic locations in Lagos and uh, Abuja. What was the quarrel? They were fighting subsidy, petroleum subsidy by the Jonathan regime. The action was that Subsidy does not exist, and subsidy should stop. Let's fast forward. Uh, let me also remind you that the nucleus of those people who organized the protest are the nucleus of the people that formed the All Progressive Congress in the APC. Now, the APC came up with a lot of masters just two years later. That action has metamorphosed into a serious political movement that came up with all sorts of political economics that talks about we are not supposed to pay for subsidy, that the landing cost of oil is 42 naira, all kinds of gimmicks. And we're promised change. And that's when we uh, usher in this change, subsidy will be removed. Nigeria will pay 43 naira, 40, not more than 40 naira or 45 naira at the pump price and the filling stations. All kinds of things. Now, coming into the administration, we now notice that those things were not feasible. The subsidy continued. This is a subsidy that we are told was a scam. This was a subsidy we were told that did not exist. Six years down the line, the subsidy is still on. Now, I am not particularly excited that Pastor Bakare is saying this. He has done one along. So, uh, for me, I, I think it's plain to the gallery. Hmm. Interesting. It's, it's plain to the gallery. Okay. To want to identify or seeming identification as a facade to seem to identify with the suffering of the masses. It is not true. Hmm. I'm going to come back so, to you, Ambrose. I'm going to come back to you because I want to push you further on this issue of Tunde Bakari. But let me go to Bolaho. Um, Pastor Bakari Steele, again here, talked about how strange it is 
that terrorists in this country uh, are being rehabilitated and bandits are um, uh, and bandits are being neglected when they abduct school children. In other words, um, you know, there's rehabilitation of Boko Haram people on one hand, and of course bandits are on the other hand taking monies and releasing uh, people that they're abducting every week in this country. Um, and this is not something that is new, necessarily new. People have been criticizing the government about how they're handling the issue of banditry, and most have said it's been handled with kids' gloves. Um, but just like Ambrose said, should Tunde Bakare be the one talking about this, being that he was one of he was part of the people who um, aided this president to become? Yes, maybe he didn't win um, at the first time that they tried, but of course he was solidly behind Mr. President. But again, I want to flip the coin. Is there anything wrong with realizing that you made a mistake and, of course, speaking up? against somebody who you once called a friend, not necessarily as a foe, but you are calling a spade a spade. Mr. Bolaho. I was one of those on um, bench of worry in 2015. Oh. Uh, God bless his soul. Uh, you can call Duma King. On one occasion, I was on a live TV with him and I worsted him. And subsequent to that live, TV interview, he came to my office twice to tell me as politely as possible. And because he said he knew that I was doing what I was doing out of conviction, he came to my office twice to tell me that I was going to regret campaigning for Buhari. And he reminded me that in 2011, it was Buhari's official spokesperson. And for him to have changed side, it was because of so many inadequacies. He gave one example that there was a man that if you, if you gave a one-page document to, in one week, he wouldn't have read it. And you know, because I was one of those who was ready to, to vote for anything but Jonathan dead, if if a person could, okay, Billy Jonathan's dog had contested against him, then I would have, I would have campaigned for do, uh, President Goodock, Billy Jonathan's dog. But you know what? Even before his demise, God bless his soul, I've had occasions to tell Oduma King that I was wrong. In 2019, I profoundly and vociferously campaigned against Buhari because everything that Oduma King, that Oduma King told me about Buhari's intellectual persona or non-intellectual persona, which, whichever way you want to put it, Everything that he told me about his morals, especially his, his nativism, his, uh, his uh, seeming, seeming parochialism, everything he told me had manifested before 2019. And how, how some people could gloss over it and still campaign for him in 2019, I wouldn't know. But I, I saw, uh, you know, I felt that Otumaki had been vindicated well enough. I actually told him on one occasion that Odumaki, and uh, one of the reasons why one of the reasons why it was difficult for me to believe you then was because I was also privy to the fact that Kudoke Bele Jonathan did you well, did you well materially and financially. He gave you a radio license, Petals FM in Ibado. Apart from that, uh, we know that some monies came with the big money came into it and houses in Ibado and, 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 and investments in Ghana. You know what? Ultimately, he won that argument in life and in, uh, and, in his rest, and in his resting place now. Literally, on the issue of the fact that I was going to regret campaigning for Buhari, he won. Okay. No doubt about it. Okay. So, when I hear you I want to uh, take issue with the fact that Pastor Bakari now believes that Buhari is not uh, that the, the, the Buhari that is now manifesting is somewhat inconsistent with the Buhari of his belief, or that the Buhari that is now manifesting in, in, in power is totally, totally uh, strange to his perception of uh, what Buhari ought to be in that, uh, this thing. I would want to believe that that's a bit too hard. 
uh, on, on uh, Pastor Bakari. Okay. It should be within his right. Okay. I'm going if back to you, you Amber. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll come back to you again, Mr. Oba. Uh, I'm coming back to you, Amber. Now, the World Happiness Report um, shows that Nigeria is the worst, if not the um, most unhappiest place to live in. And this is in, in recent times. Um, this was also something that was made reference to by um, Bishop Kuka. He, he talked about the fact that, um, you know, the fight against corruption um, is clay-footed and, and has not moved the needle of transparency forward. He basically outrightly blames the presidency uh, for every ill will that we have gotten as a country. Uh, and he's tying this to the leadership of the presidency. Um, do, do you agree with him that all of that we're experiencing in Nigeria today is because of bad leadership or the fact that all the promises that were made by Mr. President were not kept? But, but just in case, maybe we're being a bit too hard. Has the president kept any promise whatsoever from when he first ran and now? Well, uh, uh, Bishop Puka has always been known as a civil society crusader, as somebody who has been very vociferous when it comes to the issue of democracy and civil society in Nigeria. He has been at it for more than 40 years. So you must give credence to him that when he speaks this way, it's not an attack on the president, on President Muhammad Buhari, it's not an attack on the person of the president. Uh, when you check his trajectory over the years, he has been very critical of what he feels are the shortcomings of the state of school in our country. And he proffers solutions. And he has written a couple of books. He has written a couple of uh, uh, journals. He has written a couple of articles to propose his position. We also remember him as the secretary of the famous Okuta panel. So he is not somebody who shies away from speaking his mind. Mm. So, well, like uh, China Chibe would say, if you don't like somebody else's book, write your own. If you didn't like what Kuka said, put things in the correct perspective. I am sometimes baffled by uh, the handlers of the PRO uh, machinery of the president. Most of the time, they do the president more harm than good. They behave like attack dogs. They take it out of context. They make it look as if anybody who speaks his mind, they take it as if the president is attacking the president. Mm. I mean, President, what is our president? We respect him. We pray for him to succeed. Uh, we support him. So, but the handlers, the special advisors of media and all these things, they make it look like an attack. Hmm. You know, okay. then, uh, on the other flip side, too, I don't know if uh, Bishop Puka has access to the president. Because some of these things, could actually be discussed with the president. Ambrose, Ambrose, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, let me just come in there. Um, let's use somebody else here as a case study. Let's use the former president, um, Lucia Gwambasanjo, who has been writing letters, criticizing openly. Let's not forget, he's a member of the Council uh, of State, uh, that's how they call them, the former president. He has, he does have access to the president. So. This is not an issue of audience. It's an issue of, does the president take all of the criticism? Does he listen and not just hear? I think that's what we should be talking about now. Well, there's what we call, in every diplomatic, there's what we call a back-end channel. The back-end channel is where you go to discuss issues. I get to the point. Yes. Now, I don't know, I'm not in, in, in law of that situation. If the back end channels have been explored and they're detailed, sometimes leaders are frustrated to speak out their mind when the back end channels are filled. Okay. okay. And when you have people surrounding the president, people like uh, the of media, 
making it look like coming to the president to complain or to talk about some certain issues that are not going well, looks like an attack on the president. Then maybe it can lead to people being, you know, being uh, exasperated. Okay. With an effort to do this. Okay, Ambrose, we're running out of time, so let me quickly go back Nigeria to Mr. Bola. Nigeria is a democracy, there's a freedom of expression, so you cannot begrudge as a bishop as Ankuka. Okay. For speaking what he thinks about it in this country. All right. He's a citizen of Nigeria. We're almost out of time, so my final question goes to you, uh, Mr. Oba. The presidency had responded to not Mr. Bakari, if you notice. They mostly responded to Bishop Kuka saying that he did not sound like a man of God. So I wrote down this question because I wanted to ask it directly to you, Mr. Oba. Um, what should the demeanor of a man of God be in terms of speaking truth to power? Should he, uh, I, I mean, should it be diplomacy or saying the truth as it is? Because that's the, maybe the man of God's mandate to speak truth. Let me first say this without attacking Ambrose Iboke. Uh, let me first say this in defense of the spokespersons of the president. It is, unfortunately, Ambrose is also uh, a public communicator. It is practically difficult. It is pragmatically difficult to speak competently for incompetence. When you have a principle that is anchored perpetually to incompetence, there is no way you can speak competently. Are you saying him. that the president is incompetent? Are you saying that Mr. Totally, president is totally, incompetent? Totally and are you totally saying that his handlers are also equally incompetent? Or because of his incompetence, they also seem or come across as incompetent? Nigerians can well understand what I can well understand what I've said. How do you want to speak effectively and, and competently for somebody who consistently drops the ball? Swap Gaba Shewu today and put Ambrose in Koke, it will not do any better. Okay. Look, and that is why when people that is why when people and I pray that some of you too, when you go to that level, when you are engaged by some principals. May, you, may God let your principles be those th that are performing okay. principles. Okay. When your principles are, are those who are not performing, what can you say? Look, Gabba Shew, well, we, we need to go. Gabba Shew was so... Hello? Unfortunately, we're out of time, Mr. Oba. I want to thank you. I apologize, but time is not on our side. Well, Oba is a political uh, public affairs analyst, and of course, Ambrose Ibuki is a public affairs analyst. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Time is not on our side, but we'll take a short break now, and when we come back, before then, we're going to find out what Nigerians feel about um, the president's being criti criticized. Is it a sin to criticize a person in power? We'll get to find out after the break. I don't think it's godly to criticize your president because number one, we voted them there. Even if they are not doing well, we, before we, they came on board, we think they would do well. So for the fact that they are still, they are still corrupt, all we, the best thing is for us to do is to pray for them and expect God to do signs and wonders. Somehow it's ungodly, it's not ungodly. Depending on the speech the person is using. Uh, but for the critics, and it depends the words the person is using. If it's just on, like let me just give for example, if the person is just saying out the facts on what is happening in the country. It's not ungodly, but if he's using some kind of bad, abusive word, to me, it's not right, it's ungodly. Yeah, sure it is. The scripture says, uh, the Holy Book, uh, the Bible said uh, we should respect or show respect to those in authorities. So, it's very ungodly to criticize them no matter what you get. I don't think that it's good to criticize our leaders, you know, because if we also are in their position, even we also can even do worse or do more than they have done. So it's not ungodly at all. Look at like that. Here's my take. Now, 2021 seems to have come with a truckload of problems and issues for Nigeria, um, each unraveling itself day by day. If it's not Boko Haram claiming uh, to shoot down 
fighter jets, it's bandits killing and maiming or abducting people, or even masked gunmen breaking prisoners free and burning down police stations. So who's to say what's next? I mean, if nothing is done, is it that Nigeria is heading downhill? From one security issue to another, are we now on autopilot? Where are we? Why are we letting these unholy and destructive acts continue unabated? Where is our government in all of this? I keep asking, where is the federal might? It seems every promise this administration made to us is being broken. Nigeria has never had it so bad, yet our leaders seem to be at ease. How long will this continue? Mr. President, save Nigeria. You ran four times for this office of the president. And finally, you won, only for us to be in this situation. You wanted to give us change. You wanted to change the country so bad. But the question is, is this the change that you promised? We no longer recognize this Nigeria, so bring back our peace. Bring back our unity. Bring back our sanity. Make Nigeria safe again. I am Mariana Kohn, thanking you for being part of the conversation. See you tomorrow.